Hello, my name is Jonathan Cornell, and this is the damn lecture, effects on distance on temperature, pH, concentration of nitrate, and concentration of phosphate. So some background you need to know about dams is dams, well, dams block the river, and they block the natural process, which affects the river continuum, which is rivers are extremely important in ecosystems such as Chesapeake Bay with the influx of all the river and specific wildlife such as the eel. Rivers block the stream flow and prohibit some sort of wildlife from reproducing or living because it needs transportation up and down the river. Dams may provide energy if they are a Hydroelectric dam. Dams provide recreation. So you can play in the reservoir behind the dam. And they also provide drinking water. When they will fill up the reservoir behind the dam with water, then when there's a shortage of water, they will use that reservoir and the water in the reservoir to supply their community around the dam. One of the variables I looked at was temperature. It, temperature is extremely important in the environment. It affects most everything. And since my project was based in the fall, early winter, late fall, early winter, it is cold. <laughs> it's quite cold. And it affects almost everything about the flora and fauna. Whether that be enzymes or just where they can live. pH. pH is extremely effective, extremely important in water quality because the pH may also behaviors and reactions of other chemicals in the water and as you can see on this scale fish production is affected at low acidic levels and adult fish die at very low acidic levels so keeping that river water more basic or slightly acidic is much better than letting the pH go wild. Another thing about the pH is this synergy and synergy basically means that with the pH and how it is, if you have a lower pH, let's say your pH which is normally a 6 goes to a 4, that can cause your wildlife to feel adverse effects from other minerals. It can mean 0.00, .00 0 0.08 iron that is in your water can then affect fish reproduction even though the pH isn't down to a 4. It's because the, it's amplitudes the effects of other chemicals as well and the harmful effects of them. Another variable I looked at was concentration of nitrate. NO3- minus is nitrate and that is a, it's a fertilizer to fertilize lawns. It is a nutrient that can be found in water. It is very important for growth in the water. It is required, and if you have no nitrate, it would suck. It would stink, and not a lot would get done. However, we are running into a problem of too much nitrate or could in some places and too much nitrate leads to algae blooms algae blooms is algae is photosynthetic organisms and when a large amount of nutrients enters the water Algae can then go rampant and just cover the river 
which can lead to the extreme levels of dissolved oxygen and possibly destroy the ecosystem. There are several ways for nitrate to get into the water. This image shows a few ways such as the atmosphere and animal waste to get into the groundwater which then proceeds to get into the river water. Another way is for runoff on fertilizer. Fertilizer runoff from a storm can then drain into the river. This is the effects of an algae bloom in the York River. And the river I did my this is in my experiment on is a tributine to the York River. So this happens and it happens in the area I was looking at. See notice the green half closer to the camera which that is an algae bloom and it covers half the river. Another nutrient I looked at is concentration of phosphate and phosphate is also an important nutrient because too little can stunt the ecosystem growth. It's necessary for the plants in algae to bloom. It's necessary for it to live. Too much, however, can lead to eutrophication, eutrophication, which is a process of basically having too little oxygen in the water. And its effects can be seen in that river. That river is the Potomac River, and that is very green water and very dead water. It holds eutrophication is too many mineral too many nutrients enters the river and then that leads to a large amount of plant growth and a large amount of algae growth. The algae and plants use up quite a bit of oxygen, but not all of it, but quite a bit of the dissolved oxygen in the river. Once those plants die, then the, uh, then the microorganisms that eat dead, the dead plants <laughs> use up even more oxygen. So much oxygen that it leads to eutrophication and it leads to dead zones where there's too little oxygen to support life. Methods of my experiment is I tested one dam. Originally I tested three dams. I had to throw out two dams because of the way, when I measured them, the way I measured them, and just simply the type of dam they were. I measured this one dam, the dam I kept in, on the North Anna River, which is tributing to the York River. There were six points around the dam, around being down the stream and just above the stream of the dam. So I would, I would have one point right above the dam, I have run point right below the dam, and then I have points abruptly one width of the river down the dam to see the dis the change in my variables over the distance down the dam, down the river, below the dam. Uh, three samples were taken at each point. This is a map of where I tested. I tested along the North Anna, which is in a abbreviated to in Anna on this. It is part of the York River, which flows into the Chesapeake Bay. Results. None of my variables were found significant. Temperature, concentration of phosphates, concentration of nitrates. <laughs> We're not, uh, we're not found significant. The water I experienced was very cold. It was around 4 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius in October. It was in the morning, however, so it would he it would have heated up by the end of the day. I did find algae growing by the dam. It was all around the dam. And... 
Below the dam was very clear water and did not I did not find much algae at all. Slight time difference between the sites due to the distance between them. Um, I can't test all the sites at once. I had to drive a little bit to test all the sites. So there was a slight time difference in them. I don't know if that affected my results or not. Again, it was in the morning, so it was heating up. Could have affected them. Discussion. I got a p-value of 0.1583 for concentration of phosphates to concentration of nitrates. And I got a, a 0.1101 for my temperature of the water. A trend was seen. It was a from a bottom from it was a trend that steadily rose until the fourth point. A simple linear reg regression test was made. I did meet the assumptions. And um, a dam that releases, okay, there's two types of dams. There's a top release dam, and there's a dam that releases the water at the bottom of the reservoir. And the bottom of the reservoir generally has more economic, ec ecosystem, environmental problems. It releases cold water from the bottom of the reservoir, which is dark and cold, rather than the warmer water at top, which would be what the river would usually go through. And because of this temperature difference, there's major changes that can happen to the ecosystem. Therefore, it is ec it can environmentally better with a top release system dam. That is the end of the slideshow.